It's a Dota Weekly show. Yay! Hey guys, you're watching the Dota Weekly show, your source of news, mechanics, and whatever that interests me. I'm Luminous, your host for the show, and let's get right into the news. First piece of news is that art style is no longer part of Navi, just fresh out, fresh out of Ghost Gamer today. Um, art style has officially given the statement that he's not going to be playing with Navi anymore. No one knows whether he's quitting Dota officially or if he's just team hopping. But whatever the reason might be, I mean, he, he's got 200,000 in his bank uh, or in his pocket, wherever he keeps his uh, winnings from the international. And even during the international, he has expressed interest that he's not going to be playing Dota much longer. There was uh, rumors about his retirement then as well, and I think it's going to be official now. And this this retirement from Arsa or this at least quitting Navi uh, from Mark Style, it's going to mean a couple things in terms of how Navi is going to perform in the upcoming matches. Lately, Navi has been kind of postponing a lot of their matches, just waiting for Arsa most likely to come back to the team or make a decision to stay or leave. And uh, they've been holding back matches from the HFGL, you know, the Chinese uh, online tournament. Um, they've been holding up a couple of matches in the other tournaments as well. And not only that, ESWC is coming up, WDC is coming up, and without without Art Style, they're gonna have some trouble, especially in WDC. Actually, I think even with Art Style, the, you know, the team that demolished everyone in the international, I think even that team would might have some trouble against the Chinese in WDC. And now without Art, Art Style, I don't know how they're gonna fare. Uh, especially with some of the Chinese teams right now looking really really tough so we'll have to wait and see Navi currently isn't playing too well right now they've been losing a couple games to teams that they usually wouldn't have lost to so I'm a little bit concerned about how Navi's gonna do in the upcoming matches uh, but they are one of the best teams in Europe right now so they should be able to recover relatively soon hopefully they're gonna find a good good uh, replacement for them and speaking of WDC, the Chinese qualifiers are already done. Uh, the invite list for the Southern East Asian teams and the European teams are already out as well. And uh, some of the pretty well-named teams are invited. It's probably going to be the first time that we're going to see the new MYM in action. Uh, we have Minsky, we have Orange. Uh, from the European side, we have things like uh, M5, we have Navi once again. And some of the more obscure European teams are invited as well. I'm surprised that Monkey was not considered among some of the other really, really strong European teams. So that's a surprise there. But if we look back to the Chinese qualifiers, we know that Nirvana China is going to be automatically qualified in the tournament, being just a virtue of the defending champion from last year, even though the entire roster has already changed. Uh, we have IG.Y, IG.Z, and surprisingly Panda qualifying. So Panda actually is surprising a lot of us. Uh, beating out things like uh, teams like LGD, E-Home, um, and DK in terms of qualifying in that position. Now there is another slot that uh, the Chinese team could be qualified upon, and it's going to be done by popular votes. So I think last time I checked, DK and LGD are the teams that are leading in terms of uh, whoever gets the most amount of votes will be qualified in the tournament. So I, I'm personally hoping it's going to be LGD because I like LGD more as a team. But I think DK is the overall vote getter so far. I'm not 100% sure on that. Of course, there's a lot of interviews and rumors that I don't usually cover on the Dota Weekly Show. And if you'd like to check them out, I recommend you to go on Ghost of Gamer. A lot of juicy news lately uh, that you might be missing out if you don't go on ghostofgamer.net. So, that's it for the news right now. Let's go into mechanics. In today's mechanic, we're going to look at gold. And gold is probably the most important deciding factor in any Dota game. Uh, there's many ways you gain gold. I think most of us are most familiar with last hitting creeps and gaining gold that way. Um, another very reliable way to gain gold is just wait. Every 7 seconds, you gain a gold. So that's kind of a reliable source of income. Um, it gets a little bit complicated when we're talking about getting assist gold and hero kill gold. So let's look at the exact formula for you know whenever you kill a hero and how much gold you gain. And if you're looking at the formula here, it's somewhat self-explanatory in terms of how much gold you gain. So for example, if you kill a level 10 Sven that has a killing spree, you get 10 times 5 for his level, so that's 50 gold right there. You get another 50 gold because he has a killing spree, and then you get 200. So you get 300 gold for killing Sven. Level 10 Sven with a killing spree. So it, it's quite easy to figure out how much gold you're going to gain. And this is probably the biggest reason why you don't want to support Crystal Maiden that has like a monster kill streak because you know the Crystal Maiden is going to die some point in the game and she's going to be giving up a huge bounty. Uh, but aside from that, let's look at assist gold. And that's kind of like the, the oddball out of the way to gain gold. 
in terms of assist goal, you actually don't even have to get assist, you know. Um, you could just actually be there and do nothing. And if the enemy hero dies, you gain gold. Of course, you have to be within 1000 AOE range of the dying hero. And it also depends on how many heroes, how many friendly heroes you have nearby. Uh, if you have less heroes, then you guys gain more. If you guys have more heroes, then you know all of us combined gain less. And here are the exact numbers of how much gold you gain depending on uh, how many friends you have and uh, how many uh, levels that the enemy hero have. And if you look at some of the numbers, for example, maybe in a three-man gank or a two-man gank, as a support, you could actually get a huge truckload of gold uh, if you make it out that gank alive and you you are within the 1k range. So, so it's pretty good to know. Like even if you're the carry, and sometimes you you go gank the opposing carry, and maybe you don't you don't get the last hit, you know. But you still get a pretty decent amount of gold just through assist, or, or I mean, not even assist, just be just through being there. Oftentimes, it pays for your TP scroll if you're a support assisting a gank. And of course, you know, the XP is always great. Of course, there's also a distinction of reliable and unreliable gold, but it, it's that's such a nitty gritty detail that isn't too important for most of the time. Uh, so I'm gonna skip it. But if you're interested, there's gonna be a link in the description box that you could check it out. So for, for reliable gold versus unreliable gold. So this week's mechanic is very, very simple, but I think it's also very important in terms of allowing uh, players to know where their goal is coming from. And that's it for the mechanics. For this week's interesting happenings, uh, there's two things. Number one is that the beta key has been distributed to some person named the Mr. Uber. So if you're watching this video, the Mr. Uber, I hope you guys, I hope you are enjoying your uh, copy of Dota 2. And for everyone else, go on his uh, channel and rage hate him. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't do that. That would be rude. Don't, don't, guys. Don't, don't do it. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, so yes, I apologize. <laughs> I only have one key to give out, and Mr. Uber was the lucky. Um, number generator winner. Okay, so that's for the beta key. The second thing I want to do is a I'm, I want to start a series and Similar to the DCDH series I had in the past but more hero focus and if you guys watch um, Nebulous Dota daily or hero focus daily or if you watch my uh, previous hero focus commentary such as a, a line uh, focus that I did in the past or a DCDH on a Earthshaker focus in the past. I'm thinking of doing something similar, but actually a lot more in depth. Uh, the reason I was thinking of doing this, hey, so you know what, Dota 2 is going to be coming out soon, so um, I think there's going to be a huge influx of new players, and I think that would be a good way for you know some of the newest players in terms of getting into the game and, and you know just acquainting with how the competitive scene is being played. But as you guys know, my guides generally tend to be like really in depth or really focused. And I'm actually not going to sh be sure whether it helps the newer players out that much. So let me tell you guys how, how I'm going to run it structurally. And then hopefully you guys can give me some advice or criticisms in terms of how to run it. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. For the first 5, 10, 15 minutes, don't know exactly how long it's going to last, I'm going to talk about the very basics of the hero, uh, but go very in depth in it. So things like stats gain, um, the 4 skills, the mechanics behind the 4 skills, even things like attack range, attack animation that sometimes just kind of just overlook, and and how important it is to the playstyle of the hero. Um, what are the some of the common skill builds? What are the some of some of the common item builds? And more importantly, what the playstyle of that hero is. Um, and a lot of this you could notice from a replay, but in the regular commentary, I don't. I just don't, simply don't have enough time to kind of go really in depth about that. It, it might sound like a lot of basic knowledge. But I think a lot of people could learn a lot from that. And then afterwards, I'm going to you know, do one or two kind of a replay on that hero. But not like, you know, from minute 1 to 50. Just basically portions of the replay to kind of showcase what I'm talking about. For example, if I want to showcase positioning on Earthshaker, I'm not going to just look through the entire replay, like even through the farm stage. I'll just look at a couple of selected team fight and be like, hey, let's look at what Earthshaker is doing here, how he's positioning. Or if I'm saying, look at, hey, let's look at uh, line in terms of how he's conserving his mana. We'll look at what item he's going. We'll skill his bow going if he's taking mana drain, and etc. How he's going to use his spell, etc., etc. So it's it's very in depth if, if you see from like that. And I don't know how much of this really detailed kind of hero focus will help the new player because I think let's say if you're watching. Dota for the first time, and you're oh I'm interested in how to play Crystal Maiden. I think you'll be really turned off by a 
really in-depth focus about Crystal Maiden. Oh, in level 2 you should take Bite uh, instead of Nova, instead of Aura, because there's so much stuff, you know. So I I'm just kind of curious if you guys would think actually it would be helpful to some of the newer players. Or it's okay that it doesn't help the newer players much. Does it help you? Does it help you maybe, I'm thinking you as an intermediate player, um, does it help you to become a better player? So that's the stuff that I'm interested in terms of doing. Um, it is going to be time consuming because um, even though you know I, I, I play Dota for 4 or 5 years, if you want me to get down to the nitty gritty of any specific hero, um, I might be able to tell you 80% of it, but that's going to be incomplete. So I'm going to have to do research myself. I'm going to have to come across really good replays to showcase what I want to talk about as well. So it's going to be time consuming, but on the other hand, I think it will be very helpful to players. So, you know, give me the feedback. What do you guys think that would be helpful? Should I even attempt it at all? Um, or, you know, just save my time and do more commentary? Let me know on that, and uh, that would be really, really appreciated. Okay, so that's it for this week's uh, Dota Weekly Show. It is a little bit long, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, tune back next week for more news, mechanics, and the stuff that's interesting me right now. This is Luminous. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Signing off. See you guys.